songs keep on waiting in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Hey Belinda just talking personally. When I say my soul has been anchored in the Lord, I done had a whole lot of stuff go on, a whole lot of stuff happen, a whole lot of stuff. But I am determined to keep my soul, because if my soul stay anchored, then the rest of me has no choice but to stay. But if I keep pulling up my soul, hey, Panetra, if I keep pulling up my soul, then my soul going to get a little wavy and the currents may flash and, and carry me away with the next wave. But if I keep my soul anchored in love, how do I keep my soul anchored in love? Let me tell you, by praying, by fasting, by studying his word, by staying close by and by talking to him, 
by conversation, by being intimate with him, by making him a priority. He is number one. Nobody comes before God. He already said, have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So the only God that should be reigning in our life, should be important in our life, who should, who should be is the Lord God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I don't know, I'm feeling some type of way now. You know, when I was came across the song, I said, yeah, I got to play that one. Then it was an instrumental, so, you know, I, I, get, I get more, I get less issues when I play the instrumental, so, you know, the ones with the background music. So, that's why I'm doing it. I'm not trying to show you I can sing or nothing. Because I do love singing. I ain't going to lie to you, but but that's why I do it. Because I get a lot less flat from the music I be trying to play. So, y'all just work with me, okay? I know y'all be enjoying it because y'all be telling me y'all be going in and all this kind of stuff. And I know, you know, y'all think about the words and everything because my soul is anchored in the love. Well, good evening. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Hope y'all had a wonderful day. Hope y'all had an awesome weekend. Hope church was good. If it wasn't, you're going to be all right, okay? Those of you who are uh, hooked on with my other page on Sunday, I know y'all had a good time. I tell you, my mama, she was just so excited because they never been on the Facebook type thing. So she was excited and, and, you know, my dad was trying to preach and she was reading out comments. She just kept, I said, mama, chill. Daddy, I tell him, you can't distract daddy. You know, she was just so excited because y'all kept throwing the hearts up and she was just, oh my God. I said, Mama, calm down, because she was right in Daddy's face. So I'm like, Mama, calm down. It's going to be all right. This how it is every Sunday and Tuesday. I love it. You know, just the feedback. But y'all made them happy. Y'all made them extra happy. They were already excited, but y'all just made them happy. So I thank God for y'all that tuned in on Sunday, and I'm glad you're here tonight. Because truly, I love God. God loves me. I love God's word, because God's word keeps me. Hey, what's I just came up with that. I like that. That sounded good, did it? I love God. God loves me. I love his word and his word keeps me. Y'all can use it if you want to. That's a free one. I like it. Okay, anyway, sorry. Okay. Gotta be six. Okay. You know, it ain't gonna last long the serious part. You know, so, but anyway. But we're talking, about, it's a serious subject though tonight. We got God judges the sin. You remember what the, the sin was, right? You remember two lessons ago we started talking about these people that they got their confusion on real bad. Hey, Sherry. Got their they confusion on real bad and decided, okay, Moses been gone a long time. And we don't know if he dead, whether a bird ate him, whether a pelican, now if y'all know pelicans, you know they can't fly. But a pelican came and picked him up and we don't know. So, Aaron, Aaron, Sister Pastor, hey, look, we just need you to make us a God because we, we tired of waiting on Moses and whoever he dealing with. You know that dude right there. Now, they already said whatever Moses tells us to do, that will we do. They already had the law back in the 20th chapter, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make it unto thee any graven image. Ah, they had that. But really, just like some people do, at church on Sunday morning, they will hear a such a sermon. Ooh, pepped out. Oh my God. Ooh, I felt that down in my list. Oh, my soul just blessed it. And as soon as, soon as they turn a corner, girl, what was the word about? Girl, I can't remember. Oh, um, I know it was in the Bible somewhere. Oh, um, of course it was in the Bible because that's where it came from, but you don't remember. And that's how these people did. They say, yep. Yeah, we got it, Lord. We got your law. We got your word. We going to do. They forget. Because they told Aaron to make, make a God. All right. Make a God. Yes. So Aaron, with his confused behind, he ain't staying close to the Lord. You know, whether you're a pastor or an assistant, you got to stay close to the Lord. I don't care who you are. Let's just go and stay close to the Lord. How about that? Yeah. And we'll all be happy. We'll all be good. Okay. Everybody, everybody has to be with one accord. People say on one accord. The Bible says with. With, I can be on one accord myself, as I can agree myself. But when we're with a collection of body, we all together, we thinking the same thing, got the same mind. You know, people, it just bothers me when people are in the same church, but all got a different agenda. I said, like I said, agenda, not agenda. God has an agenda. 
we have an agent. Don't have an agent. Have whatever God wants to do. That's what we're going to do. Okay? But this, now last week, they got in trouble because, you know, Moses got mad. He threw down the tablets and he melted down the calf and told them to drink. Drink the melted, that was, I don't know that was, Anyway, but anyway, but we're going to talk about that tonight, okay? It's coming from Exodus 32, 25 through 35, okay? All right, let's pray, y'all. Father God, we thank you for your blessings, your your miracles, your deliverance, your, your goodness, your kindness, everything that you've given to us, Lord. We thank you for you just being God. We thank you for you smiling upon us and giving us one more chance. Another day, an unpromised day that we didn't know if we were going to get. We thank you for brand new mercies. We thank you for breath. We thank you for our life, health, and strength. Lord, we bless you and thank you for allowing us to come together one more time. One more Tuesday, Lord, to study your word. Lord, as we go through this lesson on tonight, open up our hearts, minds, and understanding that we may receive your word. And Lord, give us the word that you would have us to say. Lord, bless these our people, every home that's represented, Lord. The ones I can see, the ones I can't see, the ones that's coming on later, the ones that will listen on YouTube. Lord, bless right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for my supporters. I thank you for the ones who don't support. I thank you for the ones who love me, the ones who act like they love me, the ones that like me, the ones that don't. Lord, I thank you for all because if it had not been for all that, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I thank you for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Lord, I thank you for just blessing me to be able to deliver your word. And as I speak your word unto thy Lord, open up, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Let it be all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Again, God judges the sin. Exodus 32, 25 through 35. All right. Let me read this introduction a little bit. I'm going to try to fly through it right quick. People who serve in government, elected or otherwise, are often called public servants. That is a good term for it describes what such people ought to do. Serve the public. But we know everybody that's a public servant doesn't serve the public. Are you a public servant? Do you serve the public? Of course, we are reminded far too often about many so-called public servants are more interested in serving themselves than in actually serving the public. We can understand why, so, why some public servants become cynical and start viewing their job as just a means of earning a paycheck. Serving people is not easy. Serving people, it, it means putting up with Putting up with, I'm sorry, y'all, and sometimes confronting angry, unreasonable, and selfish people. So you got to have God to deal with people. Mm -hmm. And it often means that no matter what the leaders do, half the people are going to hate it and maybe even hate them. And just say, it's sad for you to have somebody that's supposed to be working under you or, or serving under you and they don't like you. Shame on them. Jesus said, the greatest among you are those who serve others, <clears throat> Mark 10, 42 through 45. Those who selflessly, serve to, selflessly seek to serve others are worthy of our prayers, as are all who are in positions of authority, 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. Their task is difficult and made harder if we still, <clears throat> if we fail to pray for them. Excuse me. Moses was not perfect, we know that, but he was a selfless leader of a selfish people. He was a selfless leader of a selfish people. And there are also some selfish leaders trying to lead selfless people. Mm. As such, he was a model of what we should each aspire to be. He is our inspiration. It says out of all the people that he led, Moses. Moses was the most humble. All right? Let's get into this lesson. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Here we go. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Now he said they were naked. He's not talking about naked as in clothes, 
frog. They were talking, hey Tracy, they were talking about naked because their shame, the, the, enemy, the sin they had done had made them naked because now you all claim to be the children of God and now you don't commit a sin. And just like that, that's how some of us get messed up. We keep thinking, you know, you know, we're under God's grace and we can do what we want to do because, you know, we got a title. Your title does not say you can do what you want to do. Your title does not mean you can act like you want to act. You still have to be holy. I don't care what's happening. What my daddy preached about, God's holy mandate is necessary. It's not, you can, cho you can choose the other if you want to, but it's really, you know, if you want life everlasting, I mean, let me change that. If you want good life everlasting, because it's going to be everlasting no matter which way you go. But if you want life everlasting, then you want to be good. You want to stay connected to God and not do what causes you to have a broken relationship with God. Don't sin because you can. We may make a mistake, but after a while, you don't even need to be making mistakes. There's something wrong with you. Keep messing up. And you've been in the law for 10 years. And you find a more mess to fall in. And you call yourself a child of God, a leader of God, man. Don't you know we as leaders are going to get in. I mean, we're going to be beat down. Um, we don't Because if we leave God's folks wrong and we acting all twisted, we're going to get to beat down. Mm -hmm. So you got to watch yourself. You got to make sure you're going with the will of God. You're walking in his will. You're walking in his way. Kiara Shield had a song for you a few years ago. I think it was Eve, Kiara or Mother. But the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. If you're out of the will of God, you're out of the ark of safety. Because some people, we, we get so caught up saying that, you know, oh, the mercy of God is going to cover me. Oh, the grace of God is going to cover me. You're going to get stuck out there and you're going to get exposed. And then you're going to be looking crazy because you thought you had it here. But baby, everything is done in the dark. What you're trying to hide from me, what you're trying to hide from folks, you going to get exposed. Sometimes it comes through your lack of delivery. I'm going to leave that alone because I'm, I'm feeling I'm finna go twisted. Because mm -hmm. when you're trying to do other stuff, you're not going to spend no time with God like you do. And when you try to deliver to the people, it ain't going to... Okay. So Moses said, you looking, you just, just, just ain't been exposed. I'm tired. I'm, I'm just tired. You know, threw down the stones already. He's still mad. But he's trying to get it together. He's trying to get his folks back to it. Then it said, Moses said, stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the lower side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Wait a minute, here. You mean to tell me out of 12 tribes of Israel, only one tribe showed up? The Levites. Hmm. Got to start the priesthood over from somewhere. Judah didn't even come over. So what? The children of Levi. Would you have the, Would you have gone over there? You said, who's on the law side? Would you come? Would you be coming? Sir? Some people would rather die. Then acknowledge God. Go to church every Sunday. Fall on the carpet. Snip up all the carpet fresh. And sit right there and say, Oh, thank you, Jesus. You, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when it's time for you to acknowledge him as your Savior, you. Man. I. He said, if you deny him before me. He gonna deny you. Okay. Right. You share your mess with me. You mess with me. Because when you said only one, I thought about them levels. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. All right. And he said unto them, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side. Now you, okay. And go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. What? Go kill him? Because uh -huh. they disobeyed. They sinned against God. They had to be dealt with. Jesus hadn't come yet. Y'all talking about the death penalty? What you think this is? 
Okay, I just gave y'all a pause. What you think this is? This the death penalty. Uh, okay. Hmm. So it said, every man killed, but and the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. 3,000 men died because they worship a calf. Don't get caught worshiping something else. Hmm? Jesus came to give us a chance. To give us a chance to get it right. But don't take for granted you got tomorrow. Don't take for granted you got to the end of 2020. Don't take for granted you got tonight. God will come back when he decides he's going to come back. So we better get it together. Get our house in order. All right? All right. Said Moses has said, consecrate yourselves today to the Lord. Even every man upon his son and upon his brother. That he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. You come on the Lord's side. Yeah, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have some trials and tribulations. But God's going to bless you because you chose to have a good life. Some people don't want to give up stuff. They don't want to give up people. They be up in the church shouting going on. Woo, child. I don't, know. I don't see how y'all do it. Just living for the Lord is hard. The Bible said the way of a transgressor is hard. So I say, if anybody say that living for the Lord is hard, you ain't made up your mind to live for the Lord. You still trying to make the devil happy. Oops. Yep, I said it. You still trying to make the devil happy. Whatever form he comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin. And now I will go up unto the Lord. Per adventure, I shall make an atonement for your sin. How many people out there can say that who are leaders that they that they can speak, they can pray on behalf of their people? It's some people. I, they can preach the walls down. They can pray the the paint off the walls or the ceiling, but they're missing their guidance by God. I don't let everybody pray for me. I don't let everybody lay their hands on me. Like Bishop McCall used to love to say, spirits transfer. And if you got some kind of demonic spirit, I don't want it. You can have it. Keep it. It's yours. So I just pray for myself. Or go call on somebody else. Every prayer warrior is not, does not have a title. I just want you just I just want to say that every prayer warrior does not have a title. Okay. Alright. So Moses is gonna go to the Lord on behalf of the people. Cause y'all done messed up. Now I gotta go talk to the Lord. Got it. I'm surprised Moses didn't have a nervous breakdown. God kept him. He the loot where he got mad, but he ain't lose his mind. You know what I'm saying? God kept him. Because he was God's chosen leader. So God had prepared. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin. And have made them gods of gold. But listen what Moses is saying. Yet now if thou wilt forgive their sin. And if not, block me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Moses said, Lord, please, I know they messed up. I know they got it wrong. I know they broke your first two commandments. But Lord, please forgive them. But if not, block, take my, I don't even want to be yours. I take my name out the book. Don't you know that meant something for Moses to say, take my name out your book? If you don't forgive these our people. Moses be knowing what to say. Because he already be knowing what the Lord going to do. But it's like he know God mad right now. So Moses like, okay, Lord. Moses the attorney for the people. Lord, I know they, they guilty. 
They guilty. They did it. They guilty. But Lord, give them a reprieve this time. But if you don't give them a reprieve, lock me up. I'll serve the time. He told him to take his name out the book. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I block out of my book. They names are already going. I ain't moving your name. Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot his name out the book. Out of my book, I'm sorry. He said, out of my book. Don't ever get in a position where the Lord take your name out of his book. That's why I say stay close, stay by the fire. You'll be better off that way. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, my angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. You go ahead. All right. I'm going I'm to consider what you said. But they're not going to get away with this. I promise you. I, 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 I had decided when I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to do it. I know what I'm going to do with that. Take that back. He know my hand to decide. Lord know when he going to bust your head to the white meat. And he said, when they, whenever they come, I'm going to get them. Because they sinned against me. They broke my law. They did all this against me. I, I don't appreciate that. So to let you know I'm serious about what I say, I'm going to check you. It ain't going to be a good check. Don't ever get checked by the law. You'd rather get checked by folks than get checked by the law. Because the law goes like, pop, did I tell you? You know, some of y'all got slapped upside the head and popped on top of the head. It, it's worse than that with the law. You feel it through your whole entire system. I mean, earth that. I mean, you just be like, oh, Lord, see, what well, hash. I'm talking. Don't ever get in that spot. Okay. And the Lord plagued the people. Oh, he plagued the people. Because they made the calf. Which Aaron made. How they made the calf with Aaron? Because they provided the materials. So you provide the materials to. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Let me go and say it. When you provide the materials. For somebody to do something that's against God. You just as guilty. In the criminal world, they call that an accessory after the fact. Don't be accessories. Because some of y'all think that, okay, I didn't actually, I didn't actually pull the trigger. But you were with them. You were in the car. So guess what? You get the same amount of punishment than the actual trigger man gets. Well, I was just with them. I was just in the car. I didn't do all that. I didn't get involved, but you were there. You didn't ask them to drop you off at home. You didn't say no when you said let, when they said let's go. You went on with them. And now that you were with them, now you're in trouble with them. And God's gonna whoop you double. Why? Because you know what? God judges the sin. He does. So we just need to start asking God, Lord, help me to stop sinning. That's if you want to, but I'm saying you better you need to want to. Go, don't get to the point of want to. Because if you keep on doing these things and keep on going against God and keep on, I'm grown, I ain't got to. Okay, I ain't got to. And if you go to God more and start, you know, and stop all this arrogant talking like you all at a bag of chips and then when you keep hitting your head against God, oh God, be with me. Lord, touch me. God got me. You sure? Do you got God? You keep saying God got you, but does God does, do you got God? Keep going through, keep going through, keep going through. I'm like, well, okay, well. Do you ever see the sunshine? And then when the rain stops, then you're going back to what you do. Okay? Humble. Humble yourself. Ask God to bless you, touch you, rearrange your mind, renew your mind. 
renew you, align you, connect you, put you in position. Because some of us are trying to be in position and we're in the wrong chair. We're in the right room, but the wrong chair. Because sometimes we go to a place, you know, that absurd, and you they tell you, look for your name card. And you don't want to look for your name card, so you just sit down. Baby, you're in the wrong chair. You need to go be in the right chair. Make sure it's your chair. Okay? Don't let God judge you because of things you're doing wrong. Get it together. We all trying to go to hell. Aren't we? Practical points. People are most vulnerable to failure when they are doing whatever seems right in their own eyes. Didn't I just say that? Godly. I told you, I don't look at the practical points. Still, I read them to you. I promise you I don't. So that kind of tells you confirmation of what's really going on. Okay. People are most vulnerable to failure when they are doing whatever seems right in their own eyes. What you know? How you know what's right? You read your Bible and find out God leads us and guides us. The Holy Ghost is right there to walk by our sides and hold our hand. He's right there. Standing with God requires separation from the world and hatred of sin. Let me read that again. Standing with God requires separation from the world and hatred of sin. You got to hate sin on every level. You got to be ready to separate yourself from the world. Sometimes you have to separate yourself from family when they don't want to walk right. They know that what they need to get straightened up, but they don't want to walk right. They see you, uh-huh, they see what's going on, uh-huh, I ain't ready yet. And they keep trying to pull on you and talk to you. You got to block for them. Sometimes you got to block for them. Whatever you got to do, cut off, get rid of, separate, to stay with God, to get closer to God, do it, baby. You don't want folks to be causing you to go to hell. I used to have a saying that said, if I'm going to go to hell, it's going to be behind something I'm doing, not because of somebody else. I ain't going to hell or jail behind nobody else. It's going to be something I did. I ain't trying to go to hell or jail, but I'm just saying. So I'm trying to go to heaven, so I'm going to do whatever it takes, whatever God tells me to do, however he tells me to do it. Okay, Lord, some stuff I'll be like, Lord, you go, I need you right now. Come on. You got to, I know what you said. I need you. Because you know that's a little rough for, for me. Okay? Yeah. So we got to walk and talk with God. That's why Cheryl be ye holy. You say you want to be like your daddy? Your daddy ain't messy. Your daddy ain't petty. Your daddy ain't foolish. Your daddy ain't a hoe. Your daddy ain't a pimp. He is a holy God. So if you're going to be like your daddy, you're going to have to be holy, baby. And all that other mess and junk you don't. Got the good. Whew. God rewards obedience. Oh, Lord, this is so true. Oh, my God. God rewards obedience with greater responsibility. Amen. Amen. You know, if you're obedient, God going to keep giving you stuff to do because you keep doing what he tell you to do. And you know why he does that? Because he trusts you. I want to be that one God can trust. Because if God gives me more responsibility, because he can trust me, because I'm obedient, come on, Lord. Because as I'm obedient, he keeps on strengthening me. He keeps on promoting me. And so when God keeps promoting me, that's because I'm being obedient. It's so much easier when you're obedient. Just like your children, when you when they get out of line, you punish them. God do us the same way. No, I don't want no punishment from God. That's why I grit my teeth. So every now and then I have to grit my teeth. I'm like, okay, Lord, you sure? Yes, I'm sure. This is what I want you to do. Okay, Lord, how you want me to do it? There you go. Okay, Lord. And when God, when, you, when I say, okay, Lord, God says, all right. He gives me what to do, how to do. What to say, how to say. What to deliver, how to deliver. And it goes over that way it's supposed to go over. And then God says, okay, I trusted her with that task. Let me give her another task. 
Let me give her another tea. Okay, she did it that one. She obeyed me to the T. Bless her. I can trust. The more I trust, the more he gives. The more he trusts, the more he gives. The more you obey, the higher he takes you. There is no atmosphere that you can conquer when you are obedient to God. And when I say obedient, I mean from A to Z. Don't be checking out no letters because that's not obedience. Half obedience is disobedience. And disobedience is as idolatry and witchcraft. First Samuel, the 15th chapter. Read that up in there. And we, I don't think y'all want to be called no witches and warlocks because y'all don't want to obey God, do you? Okay. So start obeying the Lord. Alright? Okay. There's rewards in obeying God. Rewards. Invest in love on God. Paying your premium, which is your praise and your obedience. You start getting benefits. You don't have even to stake a claim. Just be obedient. And he'll start sending blessings your way. Godly leaders should grieve over sin before it hurts God and his people. Leaders, godly leaders should grieve over sin. Not participate in sin. Grieve over sin. I mean, that's oh my God, are y'all are y'all serious right now? We can't do this because when there's sin in the camp, there's destruction coming. You ever seen people when there's sin in the camp, and everybody know that sin in the camp, but the leader try to brush it away like it ain't that bad? See, you gonna mess up God's folk. God going to get you for messing up his folk. And then he's going to try to straighten out his folk. But he's looking at the leaders so we can help the people. We can lead the people right. Lead them to hell, not to hell. Because you're teaching against sin and you sinning. Who getting messed up here? Okay. So God and leaders should grieve over sin. Because it hurts God and his people. God seeks leaders who possess the sacrificial heart of Christ. God seeks leaders who possess the sacrificial heart of Christ. Are you willing to give some of you to help somebody else? Are you willing to go that extra mile to make sure somebody finds God? Are you willing to listen a little bit longer to the problem they have by, by getting to God? Are you willing to stay by their side until they get it? If you see a breakthrough, sometimes so many people have so many walls up. You think it's a brick wall and you find out once you break down the wall, it's Gavin I still behind that. So you don't know what people are dealing with unless you deal with them. You don't know what people are going through unless you talk to them. That's what we're here for. We're here to save somebody else. I know we can't do the actual cleansing, yes. But you want to help them get out of their situation by bringing them to God, by leading them to God, by seeing, letting them see God in you so they'll know what God looks like. Ooh. Leading them to God by looking at you so they'll know what God looks like. Do you look like God or do you look like something else? Do you favor God? Do you Are you his likeness? Are you his image? What's the deal? What, I mean, who are you really? Who are you really? God is faithful to his promises and he alone is completely just in his judgments. God is faithful to his promises and he alone is completely just in his judgment. Whenever God come get you and check you, he's right. He's fair. He's right. Mm -hmm. When he come whoop you, he, mm -hmm. he, 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 he did. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know why God did you the issue. God was, God was a little hard on me. No way. Because if he spanked your hand, he know you run around that corner and find something else to do. So sometimes God had to whoop us. Sometimes he got to beat us. But you just need a little correction. Get to the point. Get to the point of where you just need a little correction. Mm -hmm. Get to the point where God says, hey. And you straighten up. Because mm -hmm. if God got to go past a hey, it's something wrong somewhere. Especially you claiming to live on the, on the mountain and you way down the valley. Wilding with the pigs. We got we to gotta get, get it together. We all got a life to live. People love to say, ain't nobody perfect. How you know? You don't know everybody. There's somebody somewhere living this life like they should be. God said we can do it. Why we, why you, why we can't do it? So you call it God a lie? We can be sinners. If we make up our mind to. We, we can't. But we feel that like we keep caught up in what everybody else said. We not paid. Ain't nobody paid. He had I was here. I heard something the other day. I'm going to help y'all with this. God, I asked God about it. I was trying to. Somebody said, I'm under construction or work in progress. It's not the same thing. Under construction means you being built from the ground up. A work in progress, you have already been established and you just need to be tweaked here and there. When you're under construction, that means you have just began your life in God. But when you are, have already begun your life in God, then you are a work in progress. But will the work ever be complete? It can be complete on earth. You don't have to die for your world to be complete. What did Paul say? I kept the faith. I finished my course. He wasn't dead. He was about to. But he said, I'm done with God. I said, it up. It's over with. Okay. So you can. You can live a beautiful, perfect life if you really want to. But your mind and your heart got to connect. Your mind and your heart has got to connect. Because nobody wants to be checked of God, whether you in sin or not. Nobody wants to be checked of God. But we got to be willing to acknowledge what we're doing. Lord, fix me. Lord, if you find anything, quit saying that because some of y'all know some in them. Say, Lord, okay, this stuff in me, take it out. I'm, tr I'm acting like I'm holy, but I'm not. I'm acting like I'm saved, but I'm not. I'm acting like I'm righteous, but I'm not. Lord, I need you to fix me. Wash me. Make me clean. What did David say? Wash me with hyssop. That hyssop was, they kind of make a comparison to hyssop like lasso. Now, I don't know nothing about it personally, but I heard about that lasso, some strong stuff. So David wanted to be clean. He wants to be cleansed. God said he's coming after a church without a spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. That tells me I got to be perfect when he come back. Or when I leave here. I can't have a spot, a wrinkle, or any such thing. You know, they used to have I say, you know, we two white sheep, but we we don't have we can't dirty enough, but we can wrinkle each other. That's some that's how some folks gonna end up in hell because they wrinkle. Okay, I'ma quit. Alright, I'm I'm gonna quit. I got to, I gotta quit. I gotta quit. I'm done though. I'm just I'm not just saying I gotta quit. I'm I'm done. Alright. Okay. But I you know, I love y'all in two ways. You know how they go. <clears throat> Next week, we're going to be talking about Moses' audacious request. Ooh -wee. Moses' audacious request. Exodus 33, 12 through 23. Now, 
Y'all, y'all, y'all be good. I normally don't do this, but I heard this little song last night, and I liked it. And it's cute. It's it's a it's this means war, but it's another this means war. But anyway, but y'all be good. I love y'all, and we uh everything gonna be alright. Just keep keep your focus. Keep trusting in God, and it's gonna be it's gonna be alright. Thank you, Felicia. Love you.